and welcome everybody to the live stream. Today is Thursday. It's 1.30 Eastern. I appreciate you all being here. And we're talking about how to get into the welding trade. And this is going to be a series of future episodes in other trades. So definitely check that out. Before I introduce my two guests, I want to provide some staggering statistics. And if you're on audio right now, your volume. Weldingworkforcedata.com, which is managed by the American Welding Society, puts out these statistics. Listen to this. We need 360,000 welders by 2027, or 90,000 welders each year. 155,000 welders are set to retire in the next five or 10 years. Only 5% of welding trades are women, only 5%. The average wage is $24.80, while the salary is $49,500. We're gonna get into that. We're gonna get into other questions with my two guests who are rock stars in the welding trade. We're gonna introduce Matt Scott, who is the welding structure instructor at Portland Community College and Joe Young, the Senior Manager of Workforce Development for the American Welding Society. Guys, welcome to the show. Thanks, Andrew. Great to be on. It is good to have you guys right here on the show live. Listen, I want to get into this, and I want to address the elephant in the room. And I want to talk about wages, and I want to talk about health and safety in the welding trade. Now, and this goes back to social media, as I put a lot of content out there and the feedback that I get from a lot of kids, and this is the younger generation, is that there's not a lot of money to be made in the welding trade, that you can go into social media and make more money, or you can work at a fast food in, you know, uh, uh, place of work and make more money on top of the feedback is that from a health and safety standpoint, there are toxic fumes. You're welding in different positions that you may have aches and pains when you're older or maybe uh, have health issues uh, later on in life. I wanna debunk this, guys. I wanna open it up to you guys and see what your thoughts to speak to the younger generation and what they're seeing versus what you guys are seeing out there. Absolutely. Matt, you want to go first or you want me to take a, yeah, take a stab yeah. at it? I'll jump right on since I'm the older guy and I've been in the saddle for about 30, 35 years uh, in this welding trade. But, you know, it, it starts with PPE, uh, personal protective equipment, and, and we've got to start there. Um, we're wearing the safety glasses, the fire resistant shirt and all that, the clothing, super important, right? Taking care of yourself. But really before for the PPE, it's attitude. So you want to have like, I am going to do it right. I'm going to do it right the first time. I'm not going to take shortcuts. And with that safety attitude, and then you have that safety awareness, and then you work with colleagues, your, your workmates um, you have the same attitude. You're, you're, welding is safe. It's going to be a great career. Yeah, I've been climbed up into the certain awkward positions um, and, and and made those welds before. But overall, it's a it's a great career. Um, there's a lot of implements out there, every, everything from cranes, hoist, forklifts and whatnot that um, we've taken a lot of the, the laborious back strain out of it. And um, we've created a safer workforce, uh, safer work environment overall. Yeah, you know, couldn't agree more, Matt. I think safety is a culture, right? And it's um, something that every organization, you know, you, you kind of know right away. If you're somewhere and it's a little questionable, um, you know, and you're going to have that. But most places now, the welding career, fabrication careers, you know, it's there. There's safety is a huge piece of it. You know, nobody wants to show up to work and leave with an injury. It's just, you know, accidents do happen, but most of the time. You know, you're well prepared, you're well trained and, you know, things have come a long way, um, especially technology. The PPE is incredible. You know, some of the new paper hoods that they have um, that just eliminate the fumes. And I mean, it's it's incredible. Uh, 
I think in a lot of it too is, is just embodying that mindset, right? So if you're somebody who, you know, take care of your job. If you want to have longevity and you enjoy the hands-on welding, you know, maybe using the equipment available to you instead of lifting something up really heavy that's going to compromise your back or, you know, mm -hmm. oh, I'm just going to have a t-shirt on and do a few welds. You know, over time, you know, it's that, uh, you know, uh, building, what do they call it, that chronic adverse acute, you know, mm -hmm. exposure and things of that nature that you kind of need to be aware of. But, hey, at the end of the day, um, safety is is in the minds of everybody. Um, and, and usually if you embody that culture and the people around you have that same mentality, you'll be fine and you'll have a long, you know, career. Um, and who knows, you know, you might trans transition into something else. And I think one thing you touched on, Andrew, is the wages, right? Um, that's a huge elephant in the room. And I guess to kind of segue into that conversation is it's it's skill-based, right? Welding, you're going to have a series of skills and knowledge. And mm -hmm. entering the workforce, you're going to be kind of, you know, limited. You'll have a little bit. Maybe you're just, I shouldn't say dangerous, but just enough to where you can, you know, kind of progress. You know, some may have a higher skill level. But to be proficient, to learn that and to apply it, uh, that takes time. And a company, you know, is going to make sure you can do that through a weld test or some type of qualification or workmanship testing. And as you progress in your career, you know, you, it's important for you to understand you got to start somewhere. You know, somebody's got to give you that first chance. You can start cutting your teeth in the trade, figure out what you want to do, what you like. And then from there, start formulating that path. Um, that's exactly what I did. I started off as a laborer. And I, you know, found I was like, hey, these welding guys are making they're making some nickels over here. What do I got to do to get into that? And I kind of started seeing the journey and where I wanted to go. But I understood at that time, you know, making six dollars an hour as a laborer in a you know manufacturing shop and the welders were over there making about twenty dollars an hour more. You know, there was some incentivization, too. So it's all about, you know, kind of that risk reward and how much drive do you have and, it, and it's not for everybody but you can make that decision right um, get the exposure get the experience and then make a decision from there but wages can be good and i will say like when you look at welding workforce data.com that's a national figure so that's everywhere um, if you go to alaska the wages might be significantly different than what they are in mississippi um, you know mm -hmm. if you're in a regional hot spot you know where the workforce is very limited for a certain skill set you might see somebody, you know, with double the salary figures in another region of the U.S. So kind of understand that there's different hotspots and different skill sets and different industries where welding is applied, that the wages vary, in, you know, a, a lot, um, to put it bluntly. But um, there is opportunity. And that's, I think, anywhere, right? If you can't find work, it's you're not looking hard enough. But there is a lot of opportunity out there. Hmm. You know, the wages. Well, the wages it, it, got some feedback here. One sec, sec. Sorry, guys. Um, the, the wages, obviously, it depends where you are in, in the country. And I, I know that's 2480 is sort of the, the median. Um, for people that are listening, and if it's, if it's a parent that's listening or somebody that's obviously getting into the trades, What's sort of possible on, on the wages? I know that's sort of a, a median uh, wage, but what does the, the top 5 10% of wages look like? And what does it look like from an experience standpoint? How long does it take to actually get to that level? Hmm. Oh, I, I, I got to jump in on that one because, you know, as Joe was alluding to, is it's like it's, it's a climbing factor, right? So I've been at PCC for... 30 years training welders and our welding program could be an associate degree or it could be short-term certificates. But at a certain point, the students jump off and depending upon where they jump off to, uh, which career, which shop um, they get into here in the Portland area will depend on their starting wage. But the key is, is that drive. It's that I'm going to stick with it, the grit, I'm just going to go. And along that road, you need to like learn. And if I look back on my career, it's like, man, I should have taken more time as the young apprentice to learn even more than I had. And I was getting a lot, but I should have been seeking out more knowledge. So I would, number one, encourage you to seek more and more knowledge. 
And number two, just grow with the career as your interest and as your drive and as your uh, uh, passion develops, think good things are going to happen. And uh, a case study that's personal to me is my son. He, he, he went off to college right out of high school and uh, he's going to be a baseball player and problem with baseball player was it was it was great but when he came back in the summer he needed to play ball and I was like well you go go get a job or you go to school and I'm like you're gonna go to PCC welding because that fits your base summer baseball schedule and he ended up turning out with an associate degree after he hung up his cleats and next thing I know he's working in a weld shop he started up in Olympia Washington small mom and pop shop 12 bucks an hour 10 years ago. And then as he transitioned back down to Portland, Oregon, he got into the shipyard at like 21 bucks an hour. And now he's making in the 30 to 40s as a ship superintendent. So as a journeyman steam fitter, he has now climbed the, the ranks. So to me, this whole welding career field is just, it's, it's endless in opportunities. You can make it what you want. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm smart with Joe Young there. You know, he's working for American Welding Society. How much better, how much better can that be besides what was that competition you were in a few years back, Joe? Oh yeah. You know, had you talked to me about 10 years ago, I didn't ever imagine I'd be standing here. Um, and yeah, you, you never know where your career is going to go, but I'll get right to brass tacks. You know, I was talking to a, out my neck of the woods. So I live in the Northeast corner of Wyoming and energy industry is huge. So, mm -hmm. um, Local independent contractor, gentleman has his own rig, then, you know, goes out and does, you know, contract work, you know, for an energy company. And, you know, I think he's, you know, it's tax seasons upon us here. It's, you know, coming down the pipe. I think he said he broke well over the $200,000 mark. And wow. you, know, you look at that and you're like, wow, that's a lot of money. But he's a single guy. You know, he's only asked, he's living out of a travel trailer. And his only option and his only thing right now is making money. He is going from job to job to job, building a name for himself out in the industry, cutting his teeth, learning, and, you know, staying busy. He has the, you know, the gumption, the risk to do that and, you know, make that money. Now, I will say in a different aspect, there's students that will leave the local community college out here. They'll go into the mining industry, and a lot of those students start off high 20s, low 30s. If you're a good welder and you are qualified and you can pass, you know, certain tests and, you know, get in at a, a hiring tier, that's good money. And the amount that they work, you know, you're looking with overtime an easy, I shouldn't say easy, but a, a solid six figures. And, I mean, that's nothing to shake a stick at. Now, you know, are there other jobs out there that can provide that kind of income? Absolutely. Um, I think what you really have to decide is, is do you like it? And is it something that you embody, right? To me, I love welding. I, it was something that I, at the very moment I first tried it, I was like, I could probably do this for a minute. And the culture and the community of people that come with it are a bonus. And I think mm -hmm. that to me, that's what's really kept yeah. me going. And when you come to find out, you know, I think it's really with any trade, there's just a, a sense of belonging to it. And once you find your place, you can really flourish and grow. And I think, you know, as a parent, right? So I got three little ones and, you know, I, I asked myself, wow, would I want to see any of mine, you know, go into this field? And I would say only if they really liked it and they wanted to do it, you know, because that's, if you have a heart for it, then you'll make a, a wonderful career out of it. But if you're here because you just want to make some money or, you know, it's, you hear good things about it, but you're not invested in it, that, that, that goes far, you know, and it's, it's not going to take you down the road you want to go, but it doesn't mean that it can't be a gateway to something else. Look at me. Like I went, started off as a laborer and somehow figured my way over here. I took a lot of forks in the road, but one thing that I will tell people is don't be afraid to take a risk, you know, bet mm -hmm. on yourself and know what you're worth and just keep pushing if it's something you want to do then tr try it if it's something you're unsure about don't you know turn away and be like well I, i'm not good enough to be that person why not like throw your name in the hat if you got you showed up you're here you're you know you're just as qualified as the next person to you know have that opportunity you know maybe on paper it looks a little different i'm sure we'll probably talk about kind of navigating some of those waters but bottom line is is it's just Take the risk. You know, if you love this industry, 
one thing that kind of Matt, you know, mentioned, and I'll echo it a little bit is, is education. It, it goes a long way and it's a perfect opportunity to really hone and refine your skills and find that right entry point into the industry. To me, that's, that's where I would go. If I had to do it all over again, I would start right at school because the welding instructor, Matt here, and he could probably speak to it, is he knows the industry. He knows the local guys that are hiring, the local gals that are, you know, signing contracts for bids or whatever it may be that are the up and coming hiring that's going on. Those folks are generally talking to the local schools saying, hey, I'm going to need X amount of welders. What's your program look like? Is this something that I can, you know, come to you for and create that pipeline or that conduit? So now as a student, knowing the instructor, doing well in school, he's going to say, hey, you know what? I got this guy. His name's Joe. He looks like a pretty good hand. I think he'd be a great fit. And that's right there can go a long way. So it's more of like a mentoring, but just understanding kind of where that happens, those pieces. And I don't know, Matt, you can probably speak to this better. You're you're in the trenches and you know you know what it's all about. So I want to uh, I don't mean to interrupt you guys, but I want to jump into the comments just for a quick second here. And for people that have just popped in because we're live streaming and people have just popped onto this uh, to this live event, it's how to get into the welding trade. And we're talking to Matt Scott and Joe Young. If you could already feel the passion between both of them, it's sort of like it's coming out of the screen. So it's amazing to have you guys here. Uh, Chris uh, Ewing says, hey, Joe. Good to have you here, Chris. Uh, David says, hello from Eugene and my work, my future. Good to see you, David. Lance says, good morning. Looking forward to this session, Lance. It's good to have you here as always. Chris Ewing says, this ain't your granddaddy's welding industry. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, Victoria says, great information. Victoria, thanks for coming in today. Don't worry, Chad. You didn't miss it. You're here. So glad to have you here. Uh, Danea says, 100%. Chad says, the demand for knowledgeable welders is Huge, of course it is. Of course it is, Chad. I mean, there's the call for welders is just astronomical. And with the 155,000 welders that are retiring over the next five or 10 years, there's going to be a ton of opportunities, which I'm going to get into uh, with both Matt and Joe in just a second here. Uh, Chris says, those who are, those numbers are starting wages. Journeymen are making $35 to $45 hourly mm -hmm. and many of the welding unions around Detroit area. Guys, what do you think about that? Is Chris right? Absolutely. Portland, uh, Oregon is, is a prime spot as well, right? Um, the journeyman is making 40 to $50 an hour here. And as they renegotiate contracts, of course, it's going to go up. But to get to that, you know, it's that jumping off point. First of all, you got to get on the on ramp, get into some sort of education, figure out where you want to go. Is it community college? Is it a trade school? Is it right into the union? But once you get in, and you set that path. It's it's a it's uphill as far as wages go. You're going to increase, increase. And um, yeah, I think Chris is right on spot on. It's like, you know, you can make some money here. Uh, mm -hmm. But more importantly, you know, I, there's times I made more money than than others. But, you know, are you happy? And man, the, the, find that sweet spot where you're making good money and you love your career. That's kind of like what it's about. And, um, you know, to me, when I have my keyboard right here and I'm shooting out emails or I can build a pipe spool, I'm going to pick the pipe spool every time, right? I can, cause I walk away. I don't see the enter button, uh, as my email flew off, uh, into, in, into inter, internet space. I, I can see what I've built and uh, there's a lot of gratification. Um, so if you're, if you're one to work with your hands and, and really want to build something, you know, I think this welding industry is, is amazing because, you know, when you start talking unions, you have welding that fits into so many pieces of so many different unions or trades or crafts. And it's a critical com uh, component. It's a critical piece. Uh, plumber steam fitters, when they're putting that steam pipe together, you know, they do the best fitter around. But if you don't got that good welder, it ain't nothing. Um, you think about the bridge you drove over today um, on your way to work. You know, that's D1.5 code. There's somebody really qualified to pass that weld test to make those uh, connections, those splices, right? Um, to the carpenters, to the electricians, everybody is using welding at some point. I just, 
to me, that's kind of what makes it magical. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of cool. You know, and, and I, you, I'm sorry to interrupt you. What you said, because I, I just wanted to, to, to focus on this point, is the sense of fulfillment. I built that, right? I built that bridge. I built that tunnel. I built that building. There is this sense of fulfillment, and you hit right on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. I, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm flashing back to, to one of my students 20 years ago. Um, he came in, Patrick, associate degree in welding, and then he goes over to a local company, fought a structural steel company, and he starts in his apprenticeship. And uh, he starts from the bottom up. Three, four years later, he goes off to, I think, <laughs> Chris, I think it was in Detroit. Um, it was a uh, national competition for iron workers. And he, doggone it if that if that kid didn't win it he won it all there and he comes back turns out as a journeyman iron worker works a few years in the shop and he says well you know this is great but i want growth so then he hooks up with local 290 plumber steam fitters in portland oregon starts his apprenticeship all over again five years later i just contacted him two years ago and before he broke out of he turned out as a journeyman he was already offered a lead position, and he is the go-to guy now in Oregon for orbital welding. So you think, wow, what extremes, heavy, like structural steel, like when they bring in projects to a shop, they measure it by tonnage. Like, hey, we've got a 120 ton project coming in to these little delicate pipes that feed the gas to make the electronic chips at the high-tech plants. It's just kind of, I don't know. Get me all fired up here about welding. <laughs> we feel the passion, Matt and Joe. I feel the passion uh, with you as well. I just want to go back into the comments quickly here. Uh, welcome, Eric. I learned how to weld at 17. It's a life skill. And he's right. It is a life skill. Even if you don't, it's not a career. It's a lifelong skill. And I always say that about plumbing. And I say that about electrical. And I say that whatever you learn in shop class, but it's not shop classes as much as they once were. But if you did take a shop class, you learn those skills for life. So I definitely agree with you, uh, Eric. Uh, Chad says, uh, someone is making it rain. It sounds like someone's making it rain with uh, the money that they're making out there. Um, Eric says, Matt Scott, I'm right up the road from, from you. It's an amazing program. Yeah, we got it. We got to go have lunch or something then, Eric. <laughs> we got to touch base for sure. Uh, Corey says, what you get out of something is directly equivalent to what you put in goes goes the same for employer and employee. That's that's totally true. Mm -hmm. it, it, it really is. Guys, you want to respond to that? What do you guys think? Yeah, no, I think it's absolutely, you know, 100%, right? You kind of have to know where you're at and how you're being treated. And, you know, sometimes... Hey, like myself, I've worked in outfits where I had a sour taste in my mouth. You know what? I'm not going to spend, you know, my, the rest of my life whining and crying about it. I got my box and went on down the road and found something else. I was much happier to do that. So you kind of have to have that internal drive, right? And, and also be realistic. You know, some things may not work out and you might just not get along or it might not happen. And that's okay. Don't give up on it because that's the worst thing you can do. One bad experience, you know, if I did that, you know, I wouldn't be here today, but you got to kind of, you know, keep your chin up and, you know, keep moving forward. But understand, too, that there is a lot of opportunity out there and don't be afraid to to make a move when it feels right or when it's needed. Um, but, yeah, absolutely. I see some comments here, too. Like, it's not just about welding, right? There's engineering, inspection, technicians, the whole technology side with welding automation. I mean, those careers are also in demand. And I think a lot of times we really focus on the welders, you know, they're out there putting it together, but the engineering piece of it is, is huge, you know, and there's outfits looking for folks to hold that role as well. There's huge programs like Ohio state, Ferris state university that they're just dedicated. And most of those students, if you talk to any of those instructors, I mean, they're almost guaranteed employment by the time they leave the doorstep of that school. So it's not just in the welding side, it's also engineering. And, and it's it's a critical role. And I think that, you know, being mindful of that is, is important. You know, inspection for me was something that I I came into to love with. I was like, you know, a welder, I was pretty good. And then 
who's this individual over here critiquing my work telling me I got to cut this out or, you know, hey, well, cap's a little too high, son. Better try it again. So I start thinking, I'm, well, how'd this individual get here? And what, you know, makes them so important? And you start learning about credentials and industry associations, codes and standards. They're a whole role in this process. And it's so much broader and bigger than just as a welder being in the booth, you know, putting material together. You start understanding this is why I have to have a weld that only has this much reinforcement. This is why the fit up has to be like this. This is why I can only have so much amperage or whatever it may be. And, you know, that career of inspection, you see hear about the prestigious certified welding inspector credential and, and the opportunity in that, uh, you know, whole tract of careers. And, and, and it's important. And it's something that I think it's not just welding, but if you have the welding experience, you've done it, you cut your teeth, you understand the processes, that is so valuable when you get into, let's say, an inspection role or an engineering role, you're going to have the groundwork that maybe other students or other fellow classmates won't have that's going to help you compound. Myself, I worked full-time and went to school, you know, almost full-time to complete my four-year degree. And, you know, I would show up to class some days with an FR shirt, just coated <laughs> and just grime or whatever. And I'm sitting down with a bunch of people that were probably, you know, living in the dorm rooms. But that was, you know, my track and I, that was my journey, but it, you know, I don't have student debt, like everybody's facing no. and it was something that to me, that was the approach I wanted to have. And, you know, I wanted to further my education because I seen the place that that had in our industry, you know, and, and being a welder is great. And it's something that I will always like, Hey, if they, you know, told me, look, Joe, we've had enough of you. I'd be like, all right, I'm going back to the field. You know, I, going to dust off the old helmet and, and hit the ground running because I love it, right? However, I will say education allows you to climb that ladder, build on your skill set, grow professionally, and, and make a bigger impact if that's what you want to do. If you want to have a voice or a seat at a certain table, it just sometimes you got to have, okay, well, it looks like I got to have these credentials or this paperwork to get there. I'm going to do that. And that's, I don't know if it's so much what paperwork you have. In some cases, obviously, some industries it is, but sometimes it's just a testament of your drive and your will. And, you know, as a small business owner, I can kind of see some of that. Like, okay, you completed your four-year degree or, you know, you're in it. You know, you wanted to see it through. And that's important. But, you know, I know I'm going off on a tangent, but bottom line is, is there's a lot of careers outside of, you know, welding. But having that groundwork is, is critical and you can build on it. And don't let just, you know, a poor or sour decision, maybe if the employer's not doing something, maybe that's a sign of change. Like, hey, maybe I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to get into engineering, industrial maintenance, or whatever it may be. And I want to seek that out. Maybe I want to go into automation. Technology yeah. is just, I mean, it's crazy. You go back 10 years. I mean, I, hey, I remember when the iPod was cool. Now look at it, you know, you got a phone with a, three cameras on it. I mean, it's incredible. Make, make your day to yourself. It's the same, same thing. But anyhow, I digress. Um, just my two cents on that. Great comment. Yeah. Um, I want to shift gears for a quick second because I want to talk um, a little bit about kids who are thinking about getting into the trades. And I want to talk about technology because there was, uh, there was an article in the American Welding Society about Cobot technology and i had a chance to actually be at the american welding society has a trailer that travels around the country and they have virtual welding stations there and i want to share with you guys what i did this was last year at the fab tech show in chicago when it was a welding show and let's see if i can quickly bring this up here can you guys see that Good. That's that's me welding virtually for the first time in a, a welding trailer that goes around the country and it's all Lincoln Electric uh, virtual welding stations. And it was just amazing seeing the kids coming and going into that trailer utilizing welding for the first time. And the first time I actually did it, I actually got... How did I do here? I got 82, 82 out of 100. All right. So I was pretty excited about that. Um, I want to open it up to you guys about 
gamification and how that's going to get the next generation and cobot technology, how that's going to affect the industry over the next handful of years. I mean, from an awareness standpoint, it's the virtual welding piece for us at the American Welding Society is, is an awesome tool, right? You can take that whole, like Andrew kind of shared there, that mobile exhibit, and you can take that to, you know, a family event, you know, where you get a lot of foot traffic, you can expose people, you know, share them. Here's kind of what the hands-on version of it is, and then really kind of bring it into an awareness piece. But I think it does have its place. I myself am not very good at it, which is, which is terrible to say, but I'll be honest with you. But it is cool because it does help you understand kind of the functioning of the equipment, what to look for. It kind of helps build that, you know, initial understanding of the mechanics that are involved, you know, physically, how to position yourself a little bit and other things will come with time. But I think it's hard for me to say because I never had access to this technology. Um, maybe Matt, from an education standpoint, can speak to maybe the progression of a student that had exposure to that versus, you know, not. Um, I'm, I'm pretty slow. It took me miles and miles of, of welding to get something figured out. But, um, you know, maybe the VR equipment does have, you know, give you a leg up or, you know, that a little bit of exposure, you know, jump starts you to get in faster and learn the skills better. So, but from an awareness standpoint, it's awesome. I mean, it's great to to really just let them get their hands on it and then make it fun, you know, and, and yeah. rewarding. So, but yeah. Yeah, Matt. Yeah. Matt, what's your um, thoughts on that? Um, you know, here at PCC, we use it as a recruiting tool. So we got the little Miller Weld kit that we go out with the phone and, and we have our students uh, or have potential students use it. And it's it's really a eye catcher. They, they jump right on it. They get over our booth and we, we get to talk to them. But we're pretty much a hands-on welding school, right? We, we throw them in front of that MIG welder and it's arcs and sparks. Um, however, I will say um, this last May, June, um, one of our maritime instructors, Todd Barnett and I, we went up to uh, Toronto, Canada to the Canadian Welding Bureau Education uh, Symposium up there and at Mohawk College up there. They have a whole virtual lab and they, I was like, really? Like there's a lot of virtual uh, computers and they said, no, we swear by it. Uh, they're saving, they, they project that they're saving thousands of dollars based on their teaching travel angle, um, contact it, the work distance, their tra the work angles, the, just the travel speed and all of that. So that when the, the students get out to the lab, you know, they're rocking and rolling. It's a quicker transition. But if confession's good for the soul, Joe, huh? I, I am not good at it. Right. It's just like, I like to see that right here and I'm going to town. Um, but, um, I got, I got to say maybe shifting a little bit of gears, but, um, you know, I counted on my roster this morning, just in my class. So there's two instructors, uh, worth of, uh, students, 40 students in our shop in the morning and Dave Williams and I teach in the morning. And I had 15 students, um, that were, you know, freshly from high school. And Dave said he had about six. So we're looking at 50% of our class in the morning is freshly graduated high school students that been out for a year or two. And man, I am so fired up about it because, you know, I, I learned to weld in junior high. And in high school, I went to one of the premier uh, high schools that had an amazing weld shop, metal shop in Anchorage. And now I'm seeing the resurgence of just the support from the government state level with Future Ready Oregon grants coming out to um, I'm seeing it in these kids where these local high schools have really quality weld shops now and they transition over to us. And I mean, they're not missing a beat. I'm just like, this year has been just amazing to see the quality of high school kids coming out and, and man, tying it back to industry. I'm, I'm setting up tours to go to Vigor Industrial, big shipyard in town, Diversified Marine, another shipyard that builds tugboats and, and, and they're fired up as well. They're like, we want your students. Um, they come to our job fairs. They do tours for us. Um, we call them, <laughs> they give us metal. They, they just, whatever so you know coming from the the gaming to the the reality out to, out to get to jobs it's just kind of 
cool how it's all working out. Yeah, I love to see all this. And if it's going to take gamification to get kids interested and it's working, then it's working. But it's good to see firsthand what you're seeing out there and what it's sort of doing to the doing for the industry. Because we need to fill that gap. So we need those 370,000 welders by 2027 and 90,000 each each year. So if that's what it's going to take to help us. But it's interesting just kind of what's going on out there. I, I just want to jump back into the comments quickly here. Uh, Hank says, I have two young gals, nine and ten. I let them try their hands at many trade-related activities, which is wonderful. I let them both try welding on the farm. They both enjoy doing it and keep asking if they do more. The youngest likes it the most and keeps saying she wants to be an underwater welder. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's great stuff right there. That's great stuff. Uh, Corey says, uh, let me do this one. Uh, Darlene says, my daughter is looking to go to welding school. How is it? How is this industry for females? This is interesting because I, I actually had a question for, for both of you to talk about this, because this is breaking the, the stereotypes out there. If only 5%, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there's only about 5% of women in the trades. How do we support women? How do we make them feel comfortable and get them to come into the trades? What do you guys think on that? Hmm. Matt, you want to go first? <clears throat> yeah. Um, I just... You know, here at PCC, I think um, our shop and what we're trying to develop is obviously, you know, to train welders. But I think this uh, primary push in my mind is just welcoming everybody coming through the door and making sure they feel welcome. And as I look across the industry now, too, I see that that opening up as well, because, I mean, even from the simple things of, you know, the different clothing company making 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 clothes that fit the women better. It's just like, it's so important that we wanna make sure they're involved in this. Um, you know, we need hands and I wanna work with people that wanna be there. And man, I've got, we've got, you know, out of our 20 students in the morning, four or five of them are gals that are coming straight out of high school. And this is really exciting to me, right? So we're trying to build this culture. And then when I look across the board and I think social media is probably uh, is going to be a big help for us because as I look across the board, I see people like Courtney Chard, never met her other than online, but she's a UA pipe welder uh, out of Toronto, Canada. I'm like, Hey, can I steal some of your pictures to put them in our pipe welding clasps packets? Cause I want to encourage, uh, you know, the, the, the women in the trade super important. There's Jamie Millen. She's doing amazing work. Uh, she's yeah, an iron worker. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, we got to push it and push it at the early ages is super important. Um, I met a gal back at the Canadian welding bureau conference for the educators, Kayla Vandermolen. I've got her pipe welding book in my, in my toolbox downstairs. Class acts, super talented. And th these are the people that we need, we need in, in the social media. And, you know, do we dare bring up the pandemic? Well, I was slated with teaching welding online. So when I taught my welding principles and applications theory classes, I'm like, how do I do this? So I brought people in from all over America the benefits of social social media. Sarah Stork out of Texas, a metal artist, she came in and talked to my class. George Rolla and Marion Ludman, the owners of California Welding Institute, they came in and they actually gave demos in their shop so my students could see it online. So, um, you know, Marianne is just another shining example of we're pushing the narrative. You know, I, I'm, I'm trying to forge a new narrative. I mean, we need change so that, you know, we can build our nation. We need to build America. And um, I just, I think, I think women in the trades and everybody's just jumping in and, um, you know, just providing that supportive atmosphere, I think is super important. So, so I get fired up about, um, you know, bringing women in. I got four sisters and, you know, I never realized kind of some of the hard times that they went through and, and they were, they're very on the professional side, but, you know, one of my sisters, Environmental engineer. She was going all over in Alaska from Prudhoe Bay to 
Red Dog Mind or wherever doing environmental studies. And she's saving those companies money just on how they handle their waste. Um, so, you know, she's out there pushing, you know, she is the tip of the spear. So it's just it's exciting to see kind of what we can all do together. I think uh, that's the important part for me. So, Joe, jump in. I'll, I'll keep going. I just, I just want to say once before you go, Joe, uh, Jenny McMillan, uh, it's amazing what she's doing. Um, and I'm actually uh, going to be at a show speaking on the trades and she's going to be there as well as a keynote speaker. But she's amazing what she's doing and speaking to, to kids out there. I just want to put out there that she's doing an amazing job. So I'm glad you mentioned her. Yeah, you know, and and. I, I'm just thrilled to see what she's doing too, because you know, uh, back when I was a kid, my dad was a uh, a computer scientist. You know, he was a computer engineer, and you know, he realized that between myself and my brother, we we like to stay active. So he, you know, bought a kit house cabin, and we built a cabin together when I was a young buck. So then, when I my kid came up, my 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 son, who's a, a steam fitter now. He was out there putting the sprinkler system in with me when he was three. I was pulling him out of the mud. You know, he was so small. <laughs> and at, at 12 years old, I took him down to the shipyard so that he could see it. And now he's running, running crews down there at the shipyard. It's just like, I think that exposure is just so incredibly important. Um, I, I don't know. Just uh, get me fired up. <laughs> yeah. Joe, what's your take on that? Yeah, no, just to kind of echo your points, Matt, you know, I think you hit it on the nail on the, nail on the head. You know, we, we want everybody. You know, it doesn't matter. We need people and we need good, you know, dedicated individuals to join this, you know, community and, and, and enjoy their career and grow within it. And, you know, the American Welding Society, the foundation does a great job at having scholarships available to females that are entering the workforce or going to school. So it's, you know, that's one way that's been around um, in, in our, you know, arsenal of tools to kind of attract them. Um, but, you know, supporting women-led conferences and things like that, you know, that are all catered to that group. But I'm going to tell you what, from just a working experience, man, it is awesome to have a female on your team. Mm -hmm. You know, they think differently. They, well, like 99% of the time I would just get smoked. Some gal would come in and she'd just slick it out and be like, man. Uh, they're good. They got a just a natural talent for detail, mm -hmm. and and it's incredible. And I really think that social media has done us wonders in this part. You know, it's really given folks that may not have had a voice in in a space in an outlet to kind of share their story and empower others. You know, to be like that they can resonate with or they can relate to. And they say, you know what, if if she can do it, so can I. And you know. My wife works in a non-traditional male-dominated industry. She works in the oil and gas industry as a mud logger. And she's one of the only females out there. But it's not to say it can't be done. And it's, you know, and I will never know kind of the struggles. And I'm not, you know, I'm not going to shy away or pretend like there's not challenges. But, you know, it's, it's going to have its ups and downs. But, you know, like any career, you know, if you really want to be there, you love it, you enjoy it, and you see people who've carve their own path and you believe in that then you got every power in you to make it happen but yeah changing the narrative is great and i love it the more the merrier bring them all hmm. you know we, we need people i want to uh bring up isabel this is uh she's it's a long uh, comment here but interested on different pathways maybe a welder maybe cwi or welding technician not sure what else is out there trying to figure out which mindset type of thinking each one requires the physical part of it too. Um, Joe, do you want to talk a little bit about the American Welding Society and the AWS career resources to try to find um, somebody's, they can take an assessment and figure out what they're best suited for. Can you talk a little bit about that? I'm going to put up the website here. So I'll splash it yeah, down absolutely. below if I can. Yeah. So the AWS has a, a career tool. It's pretty slick. Um, kind of, you know, guides you along the way based on your interests. If you select certain um, outcomes or certain, you know, likes that you enjoy, it'll populate a, a career profile. So if you go to the website, aws.org, there's a career resources tab. You can explore 15 welding careers on there. And it's just a broad spectrum of how, where welding can take you and kind of some of the credentials, you know, some of the skills you need. Um, and, and really it's, it, it's an awareness piece, right? It gives you information. 
kind of gives you a little bit of insight into, you know, what that career might be like. Uh, and I believe there is some link outs to videos that hear from people that are actually in those careers and what they do um, to kind of get, get a feel for it. And, and I would encourage you to start there. Right. And then the next thing I would encourage you to do is look at, uh, you know, if you're a student, the student membership or becoming a member, like, and that's one thing, and I'm not trying to give you guys AWS Kool-Aid. I will say this. I got roped into this society at a younger age and I wasn't really too <laughs> sure what it was all about, but the networking opportunities that I garnered from diving into it took me to where I am today. And I discovered that old saying, it's all about who you know, not what you know, kind of thing. There is some some path to that. And it's it's okay to lean on people to get their take and help you because that's what they want to do. And, you know, being in the Midwest at the time, you know, I got a job lead and, you know, I was off to the races, but it, it was a good little thing. So I'd encourage you to look at that too. And then what that would do is if you became a member, you could reach out to the network and ask folks that are actively working in these roles and say, hey, or just reach out on social media too, you know, LinkedIn, find these folks with these profiles or ask them. You know, most people in the welding community, it's kind of like a culture, you know, and, and they're very willing to give back. The ones that are dedicated and have a passion for it, they're going to just give you advice because they want you to enjoy the same you know, benefits and happiness that they got out of this. Like anybody asked me what I would do, I'd start there and I'd hit the ground running and, you know, come on in. You know, if it, you're looking for something where you're not real, you know, physically fit, you're not going to be beating yourself up. There's careers like that out there. Automation's huge. You know, you mm -hmm. could get into the programming side of things, you know, I mean, you're still going to have physical activity regardless, but you know, it's, you're using more of your creativity, your knowledge, you know, the power of, the mind and that mental, you know, drive to take you where you need to go. The CWI is great. Learning the importance of industry credentials and their role in certain industries is huge. And when you kind of understand what those mean, what those represent and how to apply them, that might take you down a whole rabbit hole of, you know, opportunity. Um, and, and different industries, you know, advise or, you know, are regulated by different standards, codes, or credentials that you have to have. So it's important to recognize that. And, and AWS is one, but there's many more. ASME, mm -hmm. ASNT, you know, you could go on, the list goes on, AISD. Mm -hmm. and, and as I grew in my career, I was like, hey, what's this all about? Learn that, you know, even stuff that wasn't necessarily welding related, you know, I would pick up that credential if it was safety related. You know, in fact, I got an environmental credential for a job that, you know, outside of welding was kind of fun, taught me some new skills that I was able to kind of be aware of as I progressed in my career. And that's really kind of just keeping, don't be tunnel vision, you know, really just try to keep your eyes open and, you know, have those conversations. Don't be shy. You know, what's the worst they're going to say? No, you know, I'm not going to tell you how I got here. I'm sure you'll find, come knocking on somebody's door and they'll, they'll give you a little advice, but also take it with a grain of salt. You know, you never know. So, mm -hmm. but Man. Just collect your information, do your research, and and that's the best advice I can give you. Yeah, yeah, I I, I don't know. I want to jump in there too um, because uh, American Welding Society. I I became a member when I was going to Anchorage Community College, 1985. And as I think about it, it's like the best decision I made, and even more so now, right? We get the connections and social media has really really helped out. But uh, these. IRCs, industry recognized credentials. The CWI is a big one. Back in 93, I passed my CWI test and I kept that current year after year. And somehow between having kids, kids playing competitive sports and then kids going off to college, I missed the renewal. And I was like, ah, I got to do it again. So I jumped into an AWS seminar two weeks as John Yoakum was my instructor online and uh, he walked us through. Uh, and I renewed because to me, that was that, that is how important that, that is. Um, so that would, that's just kind of one facet of AWS. The other facet is this networking concept. Um, as I was saying earlier, I, I taught online and I met via online, uh, Instagram, the folks from California Welding Institute and you know, they, they not only jumped online into two different class periods. And oh, by the way, when I taught my 101 class, it was from five o'clock to nine o'clock on Friday night, right? But they still jumped in after a long week and, and they were given demos and whatnot. And I got to know them. And um, 
over the course of time with my son being a, a steam fitter, he had to weld out some PQRs, procedure qualification records for some stainless steel uh, applications on a ship that was coming in. And it was a couple different questions that came up. I'm like, you know what, son? I have my, name, my son's name's Tanner. I said, Tanner, I don't know, but we're going to call George and Mariana. And man, we jumped on a phone call with them an hour later, free of charge, nothing. They just gave us the information. Look for this, look for that, look for this. Because like the ASME code, it's pretty complex. And if you know the details, you can save yourself some money and heartache. And that's what happened by just that, that networking. Um, pretty incredible. So yeah. Um, do your research, jump, j jump on the highway, get started. And then, you know, keep your head on a swivel, keep looking and, and opportunities will find you. Um, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, just want to jump in the comments here. Chris says to, to Isabel, many don't know that welding engineering is an option as well. Since you're already an engineer may not be a far jump for, mm -hmm. for you, which is, uh, which is a good cop. Good point. Um, Chris says, I like to think of welding as if I'm playing a video game. Every time my skills level up, I can build a new toy for myself using the tools that pay my bills. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's very true. Uh, Eric uh, jumps back in. I learned from a high school trade program. We need more. Yes, we do need more. Uh, let's see what else is here. Ah. The American Welding Society, great conversation, a wealth of knowledge and experience between Joe and Matt. Yes, they are great to have on the show. Uh, and again, just want to reiterate the passion between both of them uh, is exuding through this uh, through this conversation. Um, I want to speak to you guys a little bit more of the, the path that you would take. So if you can kind of go back in time. Right. If you can speak to your younger self, let's say you go into your time machine and you go back in time and now you're 17, 18, thinking about a career in the trades or the, the welding trade. How would you go about it? Because there's a lot of people that just don't know, ah, you know, I'm interested in the, the welding trade, but I don't know. I don't know what to do. Like, what, what's my first step? What do I need to do? I want to open it up to both of you and see what your thoughts are if you had to do it all over again? Well, you know, I, I've often thought about that. And I guess if there's a fork in the road that I would have chose, the path I chose was entering into Anchorage Community College. And that's how I got my kind of foot in the door. And because of that, my shop teacher sending me off into working in a shop, that just kind of started building. Um, so education, I don't think you can go wrong there. Um, pick your school. I think if you're picking a school, don't pick Portland Community College because it's Portland Community College. Pick Portland Community College because we have amazing instructors. Um, you know, of course, there's me, but we have Dave Williams. We have Kevin Longio. We have Lauren Cobb. We have Aaron Reyes. We, I mean, the list goes on and on and on, right? So you really, really want to pick um, a school by not necessarily the name, but by the instructor and what skill set they're going to give. It's almost like if you went to apprenticeship, right? You're going to be working with journeymen. So, you know, the, the career path I went was education heavy, and then I got my, 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 my on-the-job training. Um, the other track, if I was to do it any other different way, it would have been going into a skilled uh, a trade. And it most likely would have been either the iron worker or the plumber steam fitters. And I would have worked that angle. But at that time in Anchorage, it wasn't, there were, there were not very many openings. Where here in Portland, Oregon, we're in this huge boom here with construction and the high tech that we're hiring a lot, a lot of, or the skilled trades are hiring a lot of apprentices. So. That's that would be the track I would take school or 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 straight to work via a union so that you get trained on the job. You get trained in the classroom. And to me, that's the magic right there, because you can connect that classroom to the job. And by the way, you're getting paid. You're starting your 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 benefit package and and you don't owe anything at the end of your five years, four years, whenever you turn out. 
Yeah, something to be said about no college debt. Joe, what do you, uh, what would you say if uh, you're standing in front of your younger self? How would you approach that? Shoot, man. I mean, I don't think I'd change it, but if I had to go back and talk to my younger self, this is what I would do. I'd say, look, here, son, pay attention to what these old timers are telling you. It's going to go a long way. Two, you know, you tarnish your name. It takes a long time to recover from that. So make sure you don't burn any bridges in the process if you can avoid it. And three, I think I'd probably tell myself to, you know, go a little easier. You know, you don't need to be, you know, a tough guy and see if you can't pick the cylinder up, throw it over your shoulder and walk around on it. You know, take care of yourself. Take care of your body. All it takes is one injury to set you back a good, a good long while. And, and that's a hard lesson to learn. But, you know, one that I had to. So and then I think the final one, if I had to, I'd say, you know, save your nickels. You know, learn how to prepare for your future. And, you know, because one day, you know, it's cool to have all the flashy toys and the boats and the snowmobiles and the guns and all the stuff. And then it kind of just you're like, ooh, I bought a lot of stuff. Now I got to transition in my career and then you got to figure it out. But I think overall, enjoy the ride and just know that if you're in it and you're, you know, dedicated to welding and you, you want to be here because you love it you're always going to find a spot wherever you go. I almost guarantee it. Somebody will pick you up. They'll take you under their wing and they'll, you know, put a check in the bank for you to keep you around. And, and it's just where you fit in and, and what that looks like. That's up to you. And, and you have all that power, but you know, just a little bit of advice. Sometimes all the people around you, you know, they're telling you stuff, just listen. And I wish I would have listened a little more, you know, I got, there's stuff in my ears sometimes I think about and I'm like, man, I wish I would have listened to that about 10 years ago. I wouldn't, you know, that would have made a difference. But times and trials don't hurt anybody either because you got your own story, your own journey. And, and that's important, too. Yeah. Touch upon mentorship. Um, I'm sure in both of your careers, maybe you can pinpoint somebody who's helped you along the way. Maybe it's multiple people. But how important is mentorship? in the trades that maybe they can cut the time in half in showing you which path to go down. And what does that kind of look like for both of you and, and your path and for, for, for kids who are just kind of kind of kind of getting into the trades, how important mentorship is. I, I think it's huge. Um, it, it really, uh, it really set me on my path. Uh, going to West High in Anchorage in between 1980 and 1984, my instructor was Bob Ruth, and um, he was uh, well-trained. His father was a, a millwright mechanic uh, in Colorado, and he ended up teaching shop in Anchorage. And, man, he grabbed hold of me, and he kind of he, – he, he, he knew where I was going and it wasn't good places. And he kind of pulled me and straightened me out. And, you know, he allowed me to take not only every one of his shop classes, metals one through four, but then he needed a TA. And that was kind of cool. And the next term is like, oh, I'm going to do two, two periods of TA. So finally, he says, like, I've had enough. You need to go to Anchorage Community College. One of his friends taught over there and kind of called ahead said, hey, watch this kid. Uh, so I had kind of the guiding light over there with Jerry Park, Don Spar. But then he also sent me over to Bob Services Incorporated, where uh, it's a small mom and pop shop um, in Anchorage. And talking about, they're the, they're the predominant truck building, trash can building, custom fab shops in Anchorage now. Um, and I got started there, but that's all because of that mentorship. And then when I decided, hey, I think I'm going to go uh, go to college and be a teacher, he's like, yes, you're going. I was like, there's, there's no question about it. So to me, it's everything. It's everything. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Matt. You know, one thing for me was starting off young, you know, learning the ropes. I'm green and, you know, I got to figure it out. But as a student and going to school, one thing that I would encourage, you know, somebody who's really invested in welding is some of the student organizations, Skills USA, FFA, those are great. I mean, there's great mentorship opportunities there, you know, that could take you places. And I got my own track and, and luck with that. And, and it proved to be very valuable. Um, and of course, you know, the society organizations, I think that they're, 
they're very helpful and they they really can lead you but the number one mentor and always going to go back to that welding instructor right and in my book you know i had really three of them that were were rock stars you know coley glenn and clyde and they were you know they pointed me in the direction and you know i kind of i guess picked up what they were laying down and took the ball and ran with it but it, it's huge and you know the instructor can start there and then you know you can kind of see where you want to go and, and find another individual and, and hey let's make those connections and go from there but yeah absolutely mentorship is is key hmm. yeah you don't sometimes you don't think about that when you're younger to attach yourself to someone who's knowledgeable and can really help and it's especially fulfilling when somebody who's older who's really uh successful that reaches out and wants to help you and mm -hmm. i i want people who are veterans on job sites or who are in different trades to really listen that it's extremely important to give back pay it forward because you were new once time one time or another and you should reach out and help that newer individual so i mean you guys show it showed it right then and there that you know, mentorship is is key to to building your skill set and cutting you could cut your time in half yeah absolutely yeah um something that always comes up is sort of the the college route versus the trade school route and you know not colleges we know is not for everybody i i went to college for four years and i always say this i came out more confused out of college than when i was in college but somebody who's looking at a path of a trades path or a college path can you talk just a little bit about sort of the differences of going sort of again the trades path versus a college path and what that looks like from a debt standpoint versus doing an apprenticeship and making money right away just want to get your uh, thoughts on that matt you want to you yeah, know you yeah. guys got the big union out there be a good um, one to kind of leverage yeah, it's, I, I think when it comes down to it, um, yeah, I, I guess I got I got so many things pinging them in my mind. So I'm going to really try to hone in and get focused on trades versus college. When you graduate from high school, is the opportunity there? Has the opportunity been presented to you, whether it be from your teachers, your counselors, your parents, about the trade union? Um, I think back about eight years ago, we had a crew in our shop that were all journeyman plumber steam fitters that were putting in the boiler slash the process piping in our building, working right in front of our students. And they were journeymen at 24, 25, because they got connected right out of high school into local 290 and got trained. And the benefits of a program such as that, whether it's iron workers, carpenters, pile drivers, whatever, is that you're actually going to be going to school. You're actually going to be learning. But that night school is tied to what you really do on the day or in the day on the job. And you get to work with the journey persons out there to kind of reinforce that. And to me, that's that connectivity, that connective tissue that really like, when that happens with me, it's like it sticks and it sticks forever. Um, so that's one path. When you choose to go the school route, um, that that's that could be fine for you if that fits you. But you got to also recognize that um, there there's going to be some debt incurred in that, and the ROI, the return on investment. When you graduate with that two four year degree or master's degree. Is that going to be worthwhile wage wise at the end? Obviously, are you satisfied with that career field that you chose? Um, it was a pivotal point in my son's career when he hang, hung up his baseball cleats. He was a junior and finished up his junior year. And he was just like, well, you know, the baseball thing, I know where it's going and I'm having a lot of fun, but I need to get started in my life. And I was like, my wife and I were like, hey, son, whatever you want to do, you know, we support you. And, um, he crafted off and, and, you know, took away from, uh, uh, got out of the college, the university said, and, and started, finished up his welding degree at PCC and went right into the trade. So, you know, it's just, it's individual. It's, it's, you know, I, I've known people like my, my daughter went to school and, and, and she 
went to Kansas City Art Institute with got her art degree. And then she went on to get her master's in teaching. And she's now a teacher and she loves that. Um, and, and she's found ways to take care of her debt. My son obviously found ways to take care of his college debt, you know, because he, he went through his junior year. So he incurred some student loans. But it's really individualized. Um, you know, I'm such a trade advocate that I'm like, oh, it's an easy decision for me. If I can go learn from somebody who's been doing it for 20 years and go to school and make that connection of this is all the theory behind what I'm learning. And I don't owe anything at the end. And oh, by the way, I'm starting to career that uh, that bank account for my retirement. Oh, I got health insurance. Um, you know, I got paid leave off a little PTO a week or two off, depending upon what it, you know, what my union contract says. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of liking that idea myself. So it's really individualized on what you pick. But I feel like and I feel like the tides are starting to sway this way more in Oregon is that we really need to kind of, you know, forge that new narrative. Uh, we need to really be pushing on career opportunities in the trades because I think there's a lot of them out there and there's a lot of great work that is to be done and needs to be done for our country. Well said. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Shoot, I'll go right to brass tacks. You know, there's no right or wrong way. You want to go to mm -hmm. school? Right. Good on you. You want to right out of high school, hit the workforce? Hey, that's fine. You want to go to a trade school, get into an apprenticeship? By all means. I mean, there's and whatever your situation looks like doesn't have to dictate your entrance to this, you know, career. And and you could find your way. You know, I did it. You know, I came from a small family business during like really challenging economic times, had to go from something that I knew from being a young child into just working to make money, pay bills, and it can be done. And then you learn, hey, school, this is important. Some of these degrees are important. Hey, there's an apprenticeship opportunity over here that's structured that's going to give me skills, pay raises, you know, also industry credentials. That looks pretty cool, too. You know, and all of that is fine. And there is no wrong way. One thing I would say is scholarships help me out immensely. Um, mm -hmm. I see the value in education. I think that there's a place for it. That's not for everybody. But I use scholarships as a tool to, you know, stay away from that student debt. The American Welding Society does a really good job. I encourage you to check that out. That helps fund, you know, your education, you know, to get into the workforce. And whether you're only going to school for, you know, six months or four years, I mean, there's opportunity on that front. But it's kind of one of those things, too. You know, if you're unsure, you're like, I don't know anything about welding. You know, maybe it's let me just see if I like it. I'm going to take a one class at a local community college. I'm going to make that initial investment if that's what I have. Or maybe it's a night class or maybe it's some kind of, you know, weeknight thing at, you know, your local master gardeners that does yard art. And you're going to be like, I'm going to try it just to see what it's all about. There is nothing wrong with that. And you should totally do that because it might take you down a whole rabbit hole like it took me. And I still haven't found it yet, but boy, I'm... I'm digging. I'm going to find it, maybe. But that's, you know, I guess the opportunity's there. Don't be afraid to pull the curtains back and just see what it is. And and do your research along the way. Listen to folks and, and just, you know, keep that head on a swivel and, and keep grinding, you know. But to me, there's no right or wrong way. However you want to go about it, however you get where you need to be, you're going to get there. And But there's just be aware that there's a lot of resources and a lot of conduits, whether it's an apprenticeship, community college, for you university, you know, or just hitting right into the workforce, working for a really nice mom and pop shop. That, I mean, those are ways to get where you need to go. So, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I've kind of hit them all and they've done me justice and I can't, you know, I have nothing bad to say about it, but I, you know, I enjoy my career. I, you know, I, Hey, you know, it's something to fall back on too. And I think that's something people can really realize, you know, if you, don't like the direction you went. So, well, shoot, I'm just going to retract a little bit. I'm going to go back under the hood and see where that takes me. You got that option too, which is kind of the beauty of having a skill and and talent and knowledge. You know, I ain't going to take that away from you. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to do what's right for you. And whether it's a college route or it's a trades path, you have to be happy with what you pick. But there should be an option. And there should be an option, especially, like you said, if, you know, uh, kids are talking to, to speaking to guidance counselors that they are giving the option of the trades and are supporting that path. If uh, somebody 
has is good with their hands or has some sort of technical spark that they are providing sort of that option. So I completely agree with you. But to, to think down the road of what it's going to cost for college versus what it's going to you know, cost going to trade school and then the money that you can make to really kind of think about that from a financial standpoint. So to reach their own and uh, just making sure that everybody's got the, uh, the right information. I just want to jump back into the comments here. Josh says, with the demand for new welders, we are going to see an uptick in adoption of technology, like we were talking about, that younger younger generation may be more comfortable learning is an answer to the upcoming labor shortage, new technology that helps amateur welders learn the trade faster. I think we pretty much touched upon that about some of the technology that's out there. Uh, Hugo says, very well said. Hugo. Thank you. <laughs> Hugo. Now that guy's a welder, let me tell you. <laughs> Good to uh, good to have you here, Hugo. Uh, Victoria says fully funded apprenticeships through the UA local unions. Thank you for that, Victoria. Uh, David says Matt needs to speak of the PCC trailer. Oh my gosh! <laughs> well, I got to tell you, this is oh, this is this is a good one. You know, PCC, we have been, I'll just say it, spoiled. I mean. Our state has been so, so supportive with the FRO Future Ready Oregon grants. And we have built a maritime program. We've built an integrated education training program. And this has kind of caught fire. And then all of a sudden, Union Pacific Railroad's like, we want to be in this education too. We have needs to develop welders. So they have given us money to purchase a trailer, outfit a trailer, and run a trailer. So over the last two years, um, I'm going to brag about my brother over at the Maritime Program, Todd Barnett. He's our teacher, uh, our instructor over there, but he found a trailer. We got it painted, painted by Vigor Industrial. Uh, at the yard, they were calling it Big Bird because it was yellow. Uh, and we put our logos all over it, and we got that thing outfitted, six stations, and we uh, have a tractor trailer that uh, we pull it with, supported by FRO, our Future Ready Oregon Grant. Union Pacific has come together. They coupled that up and we're on the road. We took it out for the first time to OMIC, Oregon Manufacturers Innovation Center. PCC has a training center location out in Scappoose, Oregon. And we beta tested it with some St. Helens and Scappoose High School students. It's going to be headed to a local uh, high school, Liberty High School, for another shot here in a couple of weeks of, to train some welders, student welders in. And the main push, we're going to focus on high schools for probably the next six months. And then we're, we're going to, you know, work out all the kinks and we're going to go all over this great state of Oregon. We have plans. Um, Todd's heritage is uh, Indian reservations. He wants to you know, get out there and train some welders out there. So we're really excited about those opportunities because that's kind of in our master plan for Portland Community College, making sure we're out there for everybody. And um, we are going to be the travel and roadshow, whether we're training high school students, skilled trades gap at businesses, we could be testing welders. So we're, we, we're looking pretty exciting. It's almost as though we need to start building 2.0, 3.0 and 4.0 uh, because uh, we've got a, a full-time, uh, manager now for coordinating it and so i it's just it's a very exciting time and i mean i've you guys i've never been i've been in education 30 years but we got state funding we had full support we wrote five different career pathways for our maritime program we came up with um this integrated education training program where we're bringing in people um from from different countries and teaching them English and training them to weld at the same time. We've got a mobile train. I, I, I just like, it's just blown my mind. And it really all centers around the, our instructors. They're just like, Hey, what do you think about this? And, and our administrative staff's been like, run, let them run. And we just been like, been able to accomplish so much in the last couple of years. So it's been pretty doggone exciting. So that's a long story to that trailer, but let me tell you what, uh, I am so super proud of that trailer because there had been so much work by so many people that it was just like clear the path and we got it rolling. So pretty exciting. So yeah, thanks for that day. And we need to do lunch sometime too. 
That's awesome. You got to send us some pictures on that. We want to see that. That's very cool. I uh, just want to bring in uh, a few more comments here. Chris says the VR welders are cool and a great outreach tool, but they really aren't the same as getting real art time. Obviously, the hands-on works a little bit different than uh, the virtual, but at least gives kids interested in uh, working with their hands. Uh, Danea says the industry has definitely changed Within the last five years or so, when I started 12 years ago, it was so challenging finding stuff for me. It's not the case now. Social media has definitely been my outlet to find other females. And we talked about this, the different, di different people like Jamie and others out there who are putting uh, their work out there. And that's how w other women are being discovered out there. But it's great that they're putting themselves out there and, and helping others and other women like uh, Danea to consider uh, the trade. So it's really amazing to see that. Yeah. Danea, you got to go to, you got to go to Fabtech, hit up the uh, AWS booth, go to the reception. Uh, that's, that's, I, I made so many great connections this last year there. So I'd really encourage you if you can get there, go, go and go. Darlene says, thanks guys, so helpful as a parent to feel a bit more confident for her to go into this trade. Is there any way this podcast interview will be available? Yes, it will be uh, available uh, after we end the live stream that uh, a copy would be available. We'd love for her to be able to watch it. I'm watching it at work right now. Good to have you here, uh, Darlene. Darlene, if you're in the Portland area, you come see me. We'll we'll give you a great tour, you and your daughter. Yeah, we love to show off our space. Yeah. Well, guys, as we're coming to a close, obviously we can't stream all day. I'm sure we can put another hour into this with all the great information that both of you uh, put out together. Um, just wanted to get some sort of final thoughts or messages that you would like to leave with the audience, you know, especially someone uh, just thinking about uh, a welding career or it's just a parent who's uh, thinking about for their kids getting into the careers. Final thoughts from you guys? Encourage, encourage, encourage. Exposure, exposure, exposure. Um, I think the trades are just an amazing opportunity whether you're an auto mechanic, a welder, steam fitter, iron worker, you've got so many opportunities out there. Um, one of my favorites is I had met on Instagram, Jonathan Zioff, journeyman uh, steam fitter, but um, he traveled as a, on his traveler card, came over to uh, Portland, Oregon, was working at an Intel plant. And as I'm talking with him back and forth, he's over for dinner. He ends up with one of my students as his apprentice, you know. So there's lots of opportunity out there. It's a small world. Get connected. I would say, you know, um, come of, some of these arc stars out there, you know, I like I connected with Bob Moffat, for instance, um, over the Internet. So just start reaching out and start watching some of these videos and seeing the opportunities because they're real. They're, they're, they're real. And, and one of the, the best things I think about this career field is that you make it absolutely what you want. You could be a welder fabricator for the rest of your life and be happy, or you can expand in the inspection, supervisory areas, sales, education. You make it what you want. Well okay, said, Matt. My only suggestion is, is, you know, don't be afraid. Take that risk. Jump in to your feet. And a lot of times something will just fall into place and you, you'll you never know how it happened and why it did, but it does. And the other piece of it too is, is it's so broad. Welding is a skill that touches many industries and you can specialize in whatever you want and take the ball and run with it. And I mean, that is it, it's pretty hard to find another, you know, career you know platform. So it's, there's a lot of opportunity. It's very broad and it is what you make of it, you know? And at the end of the day, there's a lot of great resources out there to help you in your journey because we need people and we need to amplify our message and we need more, you know, the tangibles that they're being created by these folks, you know, we need to duplicate them. And mm -hmm. that's what we're trying to do, you know, let's get the message out there and get people interested in it and, 
you know, realize that they can, you know, chase that American dream just like everybody else. So right. it's it's good stuff. And I thank you both for, you know, letting me have the opportunity to share some of my thoughts and it's been fun. Yeah, absolutely. And I just, I, yeah, exciting times. And uh, Andrew, man, thanks so much for doing what you do. I mean, getting the word out for us, it, it, it makes a difference. I notice it. So, man, I, I, I appreciate you, brother. And Joe, it's always great catching up with you. And man, for those that jumped online with us, wow, we really appreciate it. Really. Yeah. And uh, I want to thank both of you guys, Matt and Joe, and the American Welding Society for uh, supporting this as well. It's a great conversation. I think there's a part two here because there, unfortunately, there are some comments that we didn't get to. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, we got a time uh, crunch here. So, but again thank you so much for the wealth of information from both of you uh and thank you so much for tuning in today thank you everybody thanks now good